in this lecture we will discuss about certain numerical related to the basics of ac circuit this lecture covers the numerical on ac quantities average value means how to find out the average value of any given alternating quantity and the rms value of any given alternating quantity so let us take up our first numerical in which there is an alternating signal given which is i is equal to this so we have to find out the maximum value of this particular signal the frequency time period and we have to find out the instantaneous value of this signal when the time is 3 millisecond now let us start with the solution now if we compare this particular signal with the standard form of the alternating signal which is uh, i is equal to i m sin omega t now if you compare uh, this is let us equation number 1 and given is a signal which is i is equal to 141.4 sin 314 t this is let us say 2 so compare 2 with 1 because one is the standard form of representation of an alternating current so if we compare these two signals we get i m means the maximum value is equal to 141.4 this is in ampere and we have to find out the frequency f so this is for f basically this is im and this is the time period t capital t and then we have to find out the value at t is equal to 3 millisecond so the first component has been obtained then similarly we can get this is the first one the second one can be obtained by putting omega t is equal to 314 t right so t will be cancelled out here omega we know is 2 pi f so this is 314 so f would be equal to 314 divided by 2 pi so this is equal to almost 50 hertz so this is the answer for second right similarly we can calculate the third quantity which is time period t so the time period t is equal to 1 upon f so t is equal to 1 upon 50 so this gives us 20 milli second and the last component is we have to find out t at uh, sorry the instantaneous value at t is equal to 3 milli second so the instantaneous value is given by i so i is equal to uh, you know 141.4 sin 314 into 3 millisecond 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 so when we calculate this value we get i is equal to 114.35 ampere so this is how we can solve this type of question so we just need to compare the given uh, form of the alternating quantity with the relevant standard form right and let us come to the second question in second question the statement is an alternating current of frequency 60 hertz has a maximum value of 120 ampere write down the equation for the instantaneous value see um, now what is given here given parameters are Uh, we are given the frequency which is 60 hertz and the maximum value of the uh, current this is current basically so i m is given as 120 ampere right now uh, any alternating current that means the instantaneous value of any alternating current can be represented with the standard form which is i is equal to i m sin theta now theta basically is equal to omega t and omega is equal to 2 pi f 
all right so we can if we replace if we replace all these here so we have i is equal to i am sine 2 pi f t so we will put all the values here so it is 120 sine 2 into pi into 60 t so your i is equal to 120 sine 120 pi t so we can simplify this one further to to get the right answer so this is how we can solve the given uh, numerical in this way right means the instantaneous value is given by this particular formula rest of the things we just are replacing theta is replaced with omega t omega is replaced with 2 pi f even f can also be replaced with 1 by t right now the third numerical is uh, so an alternating current is given by i is equal to 10 psi 942 t so what we have to do is we have to determine the time taken by the current right to reach from t is equal to zero uh, to reach to the maximum value of plus six ampere for the first time so let us understand this with the help of the waveform here as shown because the instantaneous value is given by 10 psi 942 t so the peak value of the signal is 10 ampere right this is the peak value we have to find out the time taken by the current to reach the first 6 ampere plus 6 ampere right so plus means positive uh, half cycle right so how will we find out uh, now the instantaneous value is given as now let us see what we are given we are given um, the instantaneous value which is i is equal to 10 9 uh, sorry sine Nine forty two t. Now at t is equal to what value? I is equal to six ampere. So this is what we have to find out. So we will put I is equal to six ampere is equal to ten sine nine forty two t. So we can solve this equation here. So we have sine. 942 t is equal to 6 by 10 which is equal to 0 0.6 or we have t is equal to uh, sorry 942 uh, so this would be like this 942 t is equal to sine inverse 0 0.6 so sine inverse 0 0.6 is almost equal to 0 0.643 so t here would be equal to 0 0.643 divided by 942 so this gives us some uh, 0 0.68 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 second so this can be written as 0 point or uh, yes, 0 0.68 millisecond. Now, what does it mean? It means that uh, the signal will take, means the alternating current will take 0 0.68 millisecond to reach uh, 6 ampere for the first time. Right? Now, let us see the numerical number 4. In this numerical, we are asked to find out the average value of an alternating current, a sinusoidal current, which is represented by this. Uh, diagram here and the equation is given by i is equal to i m sin theta so what is given here the given is that the current is represented by i is equal to i m sin theta now we have to find out the average value of this particular signal now if we see here the average value over the complete cycle of a symmetrical so this is a, a symmetrical sine wave right okay because from 0 to pi and from pi to 2 pi has 
uh, symmetrical value means these values are positive and all these values are negative here, right so they are equal so we do not calculate the average value for the complete cycle we will calculate the average value for the half cycle only right so the average value can be determined by using this formula the average value is given by the formula is i average is equal to 1 upon t integration from 0 to t i d2 so this is the standard formula basically which we use to find out the average value now in this case uh, t is basically pi because we are calculating the average value for the half cycle only Either you can calculate for positive half cycle or negative half cycle, both would be same because this is a symmetrical signal, right? Now, putting the values here, we have I average is equal to one upon pi from zero to pi. And this is I is equal to I m sin theta given. And this would be now D theta, right? So this can be simplified here further, I m by pi integration of 0 to pi sin theta d theta now the i average is equal to now uh, integration of sin theta is equal to minus it is minus cos theta 0 to pi so we have minus i m pi and then we have cos pi minus cos 0 so i average is equal to minus i m by pi and this is cos pi is minus one and it is also minus one so you have two i m by pi right so this is the answer basically of this particular question now if you simplify this further uh, you can divide two by pi so you'll get the answer which is equal to 0 0.637 i m so it means that the average value of a sine wave is 63.7 percent of its peak value It is 63.7% of its peak value, right? So similarly, we can get, uh, no, if we have to represent the alternating voltage, means the average value of V, which is again 0 0.637 Vm. So for positive half cycle, it is almost the average value is plus 0 0.67 of the peak value, which is I m. And the negative half cycle it is almost minus 0 0.637 of the peak value. So if you add both of them, you will get the zero average value. That is why we do not calculate the average value for the complete cycle of a symmetrical alternating quantity. Let us come to the calculation of RMS value of sine wave. How to calculate the RMS value? Now, given parameter is the current, which is I is equal to I m sine theta. Right? The RMS value is given by formula is I rms is equal to under root 1 upon t integration from 0 to t i square dt right so here t is equal to uh, you know again either you can take pi or 2 pi that's totally up to you doesn't matter so in both the cases the value would be same right so t is pi here right 
because since we are taking the square of the current, so the square will be positive in both the cases. Square of this positive I would be uh, magnified I right here, like square. And for negative also, we have the positive values. So either you take T is equal to pi or 2 pi, doesn't matter. So I R M S is equal to under root 1 upon pi integration from 0 to pi. And this is I M square sine square theta D theta. So we can simplify this one. So this would be I M square by pi integration from 0 to pi uh, sine square theta d theta. So using the trigonometric identity here, we can replace sine square theta with 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. This can here. I R M S is equal to we have I am square by pi integration from 0 to pi 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2 <coughs> d theta and 1 by 2. So this can be solved to get the answer. So <coughs> on simplifying this equation, this one we have i m square by 2 pi and the integration of uh, d theta is theta here and cosine 2 theta is sine 2 theta by 2 0 to pi limits are 0 to pi so we'll put the values here so sine 2 pi and sine 0 this particular factor will be equal to 0 here right so you have uh, i m square by 2 pi and then you have pi uh, minus 0, right? So this is the square root. So IRMS here on simplifying, we have I am square by 2 square root, so which is equal to I am by root 2, right? So this can be further simplified as this indicates that if we simplify this one, so we have 0 0.707 of I m. So that means uh, for any sine wave, the RMS value is 70.7% of its maximum value, peak value. Even if you will try to calculate by taking t is equal to 2 pi, you will get the same answer. So similarly, V RMS is equal to uh, 0 0.707 of VM, right? If it is a pure sine wave, or sine wave. So let us come to the next question here, which is already solved here, right? So the question is already solved here. Just I just want to give you the concept to solve such type of question. In this question, we are asked to find out the average value and RMS value of an alternating voltage, which is represented by this waveform. As you can see, this is an alternating alternating waveform because it is, uh, you know, changing its uh, direction at, around this mean position, time axis. But this is not a symmetrical alternating quantity because, as you can see, from zero to two point two second. It is uh, plus 15 volt, and from 0.2 to 0.6, it is uh, minus 3 volt. So, plus 15 volt is only for 0 0.2 second duration, and minus 3 volt is for 0 0.4 second duration. So, this is not symmetrical. So, we can find out the average value of both the half cycles here, and then RMS value is also for both the half cycles. So, the first is we have obtained the average value. So average value is obtained by using this particular formula. This is the standard formula. So time period here is given as 0 0.6 second, right? Because the waveform completes one cycle from 0 to 6 here, then repeats the cycle, right? Cycle is being repeated, okay? 
So we can see here that this V is divided into two voltages. One is for uh, the duration 0 to 2, 0 0.2 second, and the second duration is from 0.2 second to 0.6 second. So let us say V1 is the voltage, which is equal to 15 volt from 0 to 0.2 second, and V2 is the voltage, which is minus 3 volt from 0.2 to 0.6 second. So if we substitute these values here, in this equation and we solve so we will get the average value is equal to 0. Point, sorry 3 volt so this is a simple way to uh, you know solve the equation this is how you can solve it right so 15 and minus 3 because are constant we have taken them out here right so 0.6 has been divided with the both right so dt is integrated with uh, so we'll get t here and limits are 0 to 0.2 for this case and 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 for this case. Now on putting the values here, we'll get V average is equal to 3 volt. Similarly, we can find out the RMS value of this particular waveform again. The RMS value can be obtained by using the standard formula, which is 1 by T0 to T V square dt and the square root of that. Okay, so the same concept has been used here because V is... Uh, divided into two durations uh, from point, 0 to point 0.2 and from uh, point 0.2 to point 0.6. Had it been like this, had it been like this, uh, plus 15 and then 0 to point 0.4 and then minus 15 from point 0.4 to point 0.8. So in that case, this is a symmetrical waveform. wave right this is a symmetrical wave okay but this is not a symmetrical wave because the duration is different here and the magnitude magnitude is also different this is plus 50 and this is only minus 3 so the rms value can be obtained for the two values which is which are given here right from 0 to 0.2 and 0.2 to 0.6 so on putting all the values and simplifying the equation, so you'll get RMS value is equal to 9 volt. Let us come to the next question, which is almost similar to calculating the average value and RMS value of a sinusoidal signal. So you can take the example of, uh, or you can take the reference of the question number uh, 4 and 5, because in 4 and 5, we have calculated the average value of a sine wave. And we have taken for only the first half cycle in case of average value and first half cycle in case of RMS value. Now, how to find out the uh, average value and RMS value in this case? Now, let us read out the statement here. So, find the average value and RMS value for half wave rectified alternating current. So, a half wave rectifier gives you this type of output, means only. Uh, one half cycle is rectified. The next half cycle is not rectified, right? So we are getting zero here, right? So if we see uh, what time period will take here in this case, while taking the time period, we need to see the repetition of the waveform. So you can see it is uh, from zero to pi, it is going like this. It is totally sine wave. It is a sine component, basically. So this is given by because it is current, so it is given by I is equal to I m sine theta, this one. Now from pi to two pi, we see it is zero almost. Now the next cycle is repeated at two pi. So the time period in this case will be two pi. Because the cycle is repeated after two pi duration, not after pi duration, right? And it is not a symmetrical uh, kind of sine, pure sine wave here because we are not getting the uh, negative half cycle in the output okay so this is the output of the rectifier half wave rectifier so here we will find out the average value by using the same formula right so i average is equal to 1 upon 2 pi because uh, duration is uh, 2 pi and if we put it like this 1 upon 2 pi integration from 0 to 2 pi i dt so now i is basically divided into two components one is from 0 to pi which is i n sine theta and second is from pi to pi which is 0 right so we have divided this into i1 and i2 and we will put the values here 
and similarly we have divided the limits also from 0 to pi we have i1 from pi to 2 pi we have i2 and when we put the values here and solve it and simplify this equation we get as you can see these steps are simplified and finally we will get the answer the average value is im by pi right so this is for the half wave rectified output remember this is not for the sinusoidal signal pure sine wave like this this is not for this one this is for the output of some electronic circuit so the only question is how to take the time period what time period shall we take the rest of the things are simple and quite convenient because you have to put the uh, things into the standard formula the standard formula for average value is this so we have taken time period is equal to pi y because we see that for, for, for a full wave rectifier the output is for both the half cycles we are getting both the half cycle in the output so you can, you can see that the output is being repeated the same repetition after pi duration pi and the same thing is coming after that so you don't have to find out for everything because you are integrating this one this is the benefit or this is the advantage of using the method of integration to find out the average value right so now this is how you can solve now we have only one value of i here so uh, so putting the values here in this formula we will get the answer and this is 2 i m by 5 right okay so this is how we can uh, use uh, these equations to find out the rms values and average value of the alternating signal so the purpose of this lecture was to uh, calculate the uh, or to understand how to uh, you know solve the alternating quantity so the first question was related to the standard form of representation of the alternating quantity. Any alternating quantity, sinusoidal wave basically, uh, can be represented with this formula, i is equal to i m sine theta, or you can say i m sine omega t, because theta is equal to omega t, or it could be i m sine 2 pi f t, because omega is 2 pi f, or it could be i m sine 2 pi t by t because f is equal to 1 by t right so because uh, omega is equal to 2 pi f right like this similarly is the case of voltage also so voltage can also be represented in the same way v is equal to vm sin theta or vm sin omega t or vm sin 2 pi f t or vm sin 2 pi t by t right and then we have seen the average value of uh, you know an alternating signal or sine wave basically so um, the average value of any alternating quantity can be represented by this equation so we can put out the values here the relevant values the t and the i uh, or you can say the average value of voltage can also be used uh, like this and the RMS, these are the average values and the RMS can be calculated by using these formulas 1 upon t 0 to t i square dt or the RMS value of voltage can be calculated by using the similar kind of formula. We just are replacing V with I, sorry, I with V here, right? Okay. So this is how you can use these equations to find out the values, the relevant values. So this is it for today's class, guys. Right. So I hope you understood the concept very well. Thank you so much.